Hey everyone, Darkwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 Hero Guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at Earthshaker. So Earthshaker is your quintessential stunning hero. This hero has three abilities, and all of them stun, and then even his passive, like, basically stuns. You could say, like, two of his abilities combined stun. It's kind of weird. I'll show you what I mean when we get into the ability section. But basically, this hero is the stunning hero. It's like the number one stunning hero in the entire game. Um, and so if you don't have any other stuns on your team, and you have an Earthshaker you're pretty much good for stuns because you have a long range stun. You have like a big team fight uh, stun. You have like a very low cooldown stun. You have all these different stuns, um, which is very, very good. And so obviously this hero can be very good against heroes that don't like to buy BKB. This hero can be very good against squishy heroes that just like die in one stun um, or are very susceptible to the magic damage this hero is putting out. But what position do we play um, when we pick Earthshaker? Well, usually the most popular position for this hero is 4 position. It doesn't really play 5 as much. It usually plays 4 position support. But it also will play mid. It also will play offlane occasionally. And so actually, we are going to focus on the offlane or the mid version, the core version of Earthshaker, more than the 4 position. Because the 4 position is... Basically, it does all the same things that the core does. And usually, if I have a choice when I'm doing a hero guide, if the... Uh, support and the core version do the same thing, just the support version does it a little bit less well or just gets less farm. I'll focus on the core version because that's just, it does more. I can show you more with that. It's a little less passive, it's a little less defensive, that kind of stuff. And that's basically how Earthshaker is when you differentiate the core and the support version. The support version just kind of sits back tries to farm a Blink Dagger, and then sits back in team fights or whatever, stunning from a uh, far range, stunning from fog. And then as soon as a good opportunity presents itself, you blink in, you ultimate, you do more stuns, all that kind of stuff. But you're a little bit passive in that way, where the same thing can be said uh, from mid or off lane. Like, if it's a good opportunity to sit back and wait, you can do that. But you can also jump in, you can also do more physical damage, uh, which we'll see, basically, based on one of his abilities, can do physical damage too. And so you have just more to do. There's more options. There's more ways to play. Uh, but you can still play the same way. You can still sit back. You can still blink initiate your, with your ultimate, all that kind of stuff. It's still very similar. You just do more from the core position. So that's what we're going to focus on now. So strengths of the hero are obviously that it stuns. I mean, stuns can never be counted out in Dota. Stuns are very, very good. And it's very hard to deal with all the stuns this hero dishes out. So if you have low HP supports or even cores, they will just get bursted in one stun, which is very good, not just because you do damage as an Earthshaker, but because your teammates can kind of follow up on that, which is really good. You also do all that damage, like, in AoE and stuff like that, so basically heroes like Slark or whatever that don't like AoE damage, um, they just don't like to play against an Earthshaker. And the other main counter that people think of when they think of Earthshaker is this hero counters illusions very, very well, because basically, we'll see when we look at the abilities in a second, but one of his abilities does more damage the more uh, units are around in the AoE. So when he presses his ultimate, and there's a bunch of creeps, or there's a bunch of illusions there, there's just extra damage kind of flowing out from the center radius of the ultimate. And so you have like a PL with a lot of illusions. You have a Naga with all the illusions around them. And you just go in, and you just press your ultimate. You know, you blink alt, and just... All the illusions just get cleared like in an instant because they all take insane damage. And then the main PL or the main Naga, you know, the main hero takes a ton of damage as well. They're stunned. You can follow up with more stuns. And usually you can kill them if they are out of position. So it's very hard to play illusion heroes against a, an Earthshaker because you have to kind of micro the illusions correctly and make sure you're not in a vulnerable position. And people usually aren't very good at doing that. If they are really good at doing that, usually they're like higher MMR because that's like a very, very good skill to have um, as an illusion hero against the Earthshaker, but usually in most pubs, you're going to be able to counter those illusion heroes with this Earthshaker. Now, the thing that Earthshaker doesn't like, which I kind of talked about already, is that he doesn't like BKB. So, you know, if there's BKB heroes that just like to pop it, like he jumps in and then you pop BKB before you even get stunned, or, you know, they have good status resistance and they pop BKB or whatever, or they have high HP so they can just survive your combo and then pop BKB, um, that's very bad for Earthshaker to deal with because then he is just kind of wasting his combo, he's jumping and he's making himself vulnerable, and then if he's not killing anybody, he gets bursted down, he gets chased down. Now, he does have mobility if he's a core hero. He does have pretty good mobility, but then again, um, if you have good mobility, like uh, Ember or any spirit hero, basically, Ember, Storm, anything like that, they can just chase him down, so he can't really escape as much as he otherwise would. So, that is Earthshaker. That's how to think about him in general. Let's jump in and take a look at his abilities. 
So now that we understand Earthshaker in general, we can take a look at his abilities and see how he's able to be that really good stunning hero like I talked about. So first we're going to take a look at Fissure. Fissure is pretty straightforward. You can see the range is very long, and if I cast it in a direction, Fissure. this uh, Fissure comes out basically of earth and rocks and stuff just like spike up from the ground, and it does damage and stuns Fissure. any enemy along that path. So you can see the axe took damage and was stunned there, and the other thing is axe can't actually walk past this Fissure, so it's like kind of... Uh, a spell that changes the terrain as well. So it can block enemies from chasing you or your teammates. It can block some enemies from like dividing the team fight in half, all that kind of stuff. You can also cast it from really far away. So if you're like in trees or something as a support or even a core, but you want to cast abilities to help your team, you know, counter initiate, whatever, but uh, you want to do it from far away because you don't want to get counter initiated on or initiated on. That's usually what you're going to be doing with Earthshaker. You're going to be standing back, waiting for the precise opportunity, maybe stunning with your fissure first or just jumping in and ulting first, which I'll show you in a second. But that's basically how you can use Fissure. It's pretty straightforward of a spell, but you can see it has a very long cast animation. You can cast it from very far away. You have to make sure that you're, like, hitting enemies and not griefing your team. So, like, I want to hit Axe there. Even though he's back here, I need to make sure that I actually am casting it sooner and ahead of him because of the long animation. So there's all these things that go into casting this spell to make sure you're not griefing your team or saving the enemy and all that kind of stuff. Um, even though it's a pretty easy spell to understand, there's some skill shot portion of it. Um at least for the most part. It's pretty easy to get used to and pretty easy to get good at, but still you have to make sure you understand that. So that's Fissure. Next we can see Enchant Totem is also a stunning spell. You can walk up to the axe here, and I'll just press Enchant Totem. You can see he's stunned and takes damage. Keep in mind, if you level this level 1 and you don't have any Aftershock, you actually won't stun them. Um, that's just how this ability works. You will only stun when you have Aftershock. But the thing that it does that's really good as well that allows us here to be cores, it gives you this buff so that it makes your right-click damage insane when you have this buff. And it's a very low cooldown spell, so you can stun, and then you hit them, and it's like, holy crap, look at how much damage this axe is doing. Where my normal right-click, it's fine, but it's not great. Um, so that's why this hero is able to be a core, because you can use this tons of time in a team, times in a team fight, stun people all the time, do insane right-click damage um, that you can amp up with your items. Daedalus is something you can actually go on this hero, and you can just, like, one-shot people. It's kind of ridiculous. But still, Enchant Totem, very, very good. And, uh... Then Aftershock combined with Enchant Totem, I mean, Aftershock's really not that special. It's like nothing really to think about. It's just more that this amps up your damage. It just makes all of your stuns better, and it makes your ultimate really good. So you're going to be putting points into this so that you do more with all of your spells. That's kind of all it really does. There's really nothing else to, to talk about with this. But with Echo Slam, that is where... Aftershock really comes into play. Obviously with Enchant Totem too, but Aftershock is very, very good for Echo Slam because basically what you do is you just kind of get next to an enemy and you just press R and you can see they're stunned and they take a bunch of damage. It's like a loud noise. But you can see the axe didn't really take that much damage right here. So let's bring some more axes in here, some more enemies, and then we can click it again and you can see they did it did a lot more damage. So if you have, let's just say five heroes around here and then you do it again, you can see it kills all of them. It does half this axe's... <laughs> Half this axe's health and damage. And then obviously if there's creeps or illusions or anything like that, you do even more damage. That's why you kind of want to sit back with this hero and then you just want to like bide your time. Maybe you have a dark seer on your team and they vacuum and you're a support and you jump in with your blink and then you echo slam and you just kill like half a team. <laughs> and that's kind of how you have to think about, uh, think about using this hero and the spells. And obviously you can stun from afar like this and everyone's stunned and then they can't move and then you press your... Uh, your Echo Slam and kill everybody, and that's how Aftershock obviously amps up your damage. And then really the the thing that you want to do is you want to jump in, you want to use your Echo Slam, you want to use your Fissure, and then you want to use your Enchant Totem, and you get all those stuns off, and you chain stun everybody in that AoE, and then you get your big right click off, and then after that, you kind of just run around the fight using potentially Enchant Totems off cooldown if you can. If you're a core, you're going to have more ability to do that because you actually usually buy Ags on this hero. So I'm going to show you the Ags and Ags Shard because Ags is really good because it basically gives you free mobility. It's like a free Blink Dagger. So you have this 5 second cooldown on this thing and you can just jump around. Now it takes a little while, people can see it coming, but it can't be cancelled by like damage. It's not like Blink where if you take damage you can't get away. So you can just be jumping over everywhere and then you just jump in and just like, hey what's up Ags? Boom! See ya! 
So it's kind of ridiculous. Also, you can see there's some AOE there, which is pretty good too. It's kind of like a cleave that is very, very good. So you're doing insane right-click damage. So that's Ags. And then Shard, I will show you that as well because that's really good for support, but also for core. So let's refresh here. So what this does, it also amps up your enchant totem. So basically what you do is you cast, cast Fissure. And then when you do an enchant totem on the Fissure, it stuns everybody again. So you have a stun, Another stun, a stun from afar with Enchant Totem, uh, <laughs> Echo Slam stun. You have all the stuns, like I told you. Just infinite stuns on this hero. And then a lot of right-click damage to boot if you are going core and you do get the Ags and potentially even a crit and that kind of stuff. So that is Earthshaker. Those are all of his abilities and his Agnum Shard and his Ag Scepter. Now let's jump into a game and see how he's played. So now we're jumping into a game of Seb playing Earthshaker here. And basically, the laning stage is relatively simple. You just take your enchant totem uh, level one, and then you just use it to secure creeps and also harass a lot. So you can see he already hit this Sven twice. Just a couple right clicks and a spell from Rubik, and the Sven's already hurting for HP and needs to have a lot of regen. So especially if they don't have uh, any kind of like heal support, you can just absolutely dominate melee carries like this uh, from the offlane. The same thing can be true if you're playing mid or whatever. Now, if you're playing if you're playing forward position, it's not going to be the same. You're probably going to take Fissure first, just so you can block people in. You can potentially block the creeps to get the wave back. Um, like the first wave, you can block it uh, near your tower or before that, so that you can get the wave back for your off lane. But regardless, this hero is very good uh, with just a couple stuns, level one, level two, and you can see you can see how much damage he does there just from one spell. And obviously, if you're going to be playing core and taking Enchant Totem. First, you're going to take Aftershock second because that is what allows Enchant Totem to have a stun. So you're not going to put uh, your second point in Fissure because that would kind of be a waste. Then you you would really only have this as the stun. Plus, this is a lot of mana um, where this you can just constantly spam. So really, the only thing you have to worry about in lane is that uh, you are constantly spamming this out. So people are going to have sticks. <laughs> Uh, but you can see there, look at how much damage they do. I mean, Rubik is a very good support for doing damage with his spell and trading and stuff like that. Um, just keep that in mind. But, like, you can see how much damage he did there with his Enchant Totem. You can also secure so many range creeps. You can secure, like, a lot of creeps, get, like, every last hit with this ability. And then even when you're not going for a last hit, you can just make sure that you know, the melee carry just can't even lane. That's really just straightforward. That's the laning stage. Use your Enchant Totem to secure range creep, secure last hits, and harass the enemy and potentially get kills. And that's really what you want to be doing. There's really not much else to it than that. And as you get more levels, you're doing more damage. It's even like harder. So you can see he's doing a lot in these early levels. He's only level two right now and he's still doing a lot. And uh, it only gets worse to the enemy as the, he gains more levels and does more damage. So next I fast forward to just a few minutes here. He's level five, getting close to six. He's getting close to having his treads. I'm just going to put it on four times speed and kind of show you that he doesn't even interact with an enemy here for probably the next, like, four minutes. And that's not necessarily because it's just, like, a free game for him. It's actually because the enemy knows that now that he's level five, he has his treads, like, he has good farm. They've already... I mean, he has one kill, one assist. There's basically nothing that they can do to stop him from farming. There's, like, just nothing they can do. So, even... Though in this replay, you're going to be seeing him kind of just static the wave, just get his farm so he can get his early blink dagger. What you're going to be doing in your games is not necessarily this. What you want to be doing is pressuring the carry. So the reason that he's basically not interacting with anybody right now is because the enemy is good enough to know that they can't contest him at all. And so what's going to happen in your games is that people are going to try to contest you and they're going to fail because they're just going to feed you. So, all you really need is one support. Just make sure you're not outnumbered, obviously, and that the mid's not rotating or anything. But really, if they try to contest you, especially with a melee carry, you're just going to be able to harass them down with your abilities and how much damage you can do here with uh, your points in Chant Totem and Aftershock. And then eventually, if you get level 6 in Echo Slam, if they even walk up to you while there's creeps around, it's, like, impossible for them. They're just going to die. You just basically click R... Then you stun them, and then you right-click them, and every single carry in the entire game is basically going to die from that. And so, that's how you basically want to play the late laning stage into kind of the early game. It's just like, they cannot contest you, and as long as you have a support, and you're not kind of like diving way too hard into the tower, there's pretty much nothing they're going to be able to do, and you can get your farm. You should be able to secure a fairly early blink dagger. If not, uh, you should be going for ags. I would say that in a lot of these higher level games, they go blink first, but I might even go ags first if I was you at lower MMRs. Like, the lower the MMR, uh, the 
more likely I would be to get Ags first. But anyway, that's just kind of my opinion. Blink is still very, very good, but Ags is obviously very similar to Blink. It's just even more dynamic, more more of everything you would want. So that's kind of the transition out of the laning stage for Earthshaker. So we fast forward a little bit here. Just showing you now that he has his Blink Dagger, they're going to look to take fights. As long as you have your ultimate, you should be looking to take fights because his hero is insane. So you can see he jumps in and instantly he presses R. And that's pretty much what you want to do. You just want to jump in and press R uh, to secure kills. Now, obviously, if there's more creeps around, that definitely helps. But you can see there's an animation to your Q. There's an animation to your W. And so to surprise them to make sure they don't get off any abilities, you can just jump in, press R, and then use your other abilities. And then you can see, even though he doesn't have Ags, which is a lower cooldown, his Blink is up enough that he can do a ton of damage. He's just jumping in constantly. It's very difficult for the enemy to deal with all of this uh, mobility and all these stuns coming out from the Earthshaker. And so that's kind of what you want to do. You can see in the beginning, he basically farmed until he got his blink. So you're going to farm until you get your blink or your ags, and then you're just going to be running around the map constantly fighting. Now, obviously, you don't want to push your advantage to the point that, like, you're just feeding, you're jumping in, you're diving, and your team isn't there. So obviously, you can see they smoked, they went as a group, that kind of stuff. You don't want to be feeding. You can still farm pretty quickly on this hero, and when you get more items, you're going to be doing even more damage and being even better. So it's not like you can't farm, you can't static waves, you can't hit the jungle. Uh, I, the period that I didn't show you before, five or 15 minutes or so, he was hitting a decent amount of jungle. You can see he doesn't have his ultimate up, that kind of stuff, so now he's going back to hit the jungle. So it's not like you can't do this, it's just that when you do have your ultimate up, especially you want to be hunting people, because this hero, especially this early on, there's really nothing people can do uh, with all these stuns he's dishing out, because, you know, it's just not the time yet for people to have BKBs, and so you really want to take advantage of that with Earthshaker. Next, I wanted to fast forward and show you a mid-game team fight, but I wanted to show you one small thing that he's doing. So watch, he uses his enchant totem preemptively. They know that the enemy is roaching, so he's kind of running towards them. He doesn't know exactly where they are, but he knows they're roaching, and so he's enchant toteming early, and you can see he's doing it again early because he knows that he's going to basically blink in an ult. So you can see the Ember gives vision, he knows they're there, so he just jumps in, ults, hits people, uses his um, his Q, and then enchant totems again to do even more damage. And that's what you can do when you kind of preemptively use this. It's very similar to Ursa using his Fury Swipes early, uh, kind of like before the fight, he, before you know a fight's going to break out if you're like smoking, you want to use that ability early so you can ha have it queued up so you can use the like two in a fight really quickly. It's very good in that way. And so I just wanted to show you that. That's also a good example of how you want to be team fighting. You can initiate um, if you know the enemy's grouped up around something like Roche. This here is very dangerous around Roche. But, you know, that's the initiation, but you also want to be counter-initiating. So if there's like a high ground push, the enemy's pushing high ground or something else like that, maybe you guys are pushing high ground, you don't want to be in the front. You want to kind of sit in the back, wait to go in until you know the enemies are grouped up and they're vulnerable. And that's kind of how you want to be playing this hero constantly, especially when he has ult. So now I just want to show you the benefit of Ags. They actually know that the enemy just roached, so they know they should be somewhere around here. And basically, Ags just allows you to not only farm quicker, but use abilities... Like, basically get kills without using your ultimate, like, blinking in and ulting. So, they see the Lena out here, pretty al alone, so he blinks in, uses his uh, Fissure to basically get her out of position, and then jumps in and does a lot of damage with his W. But you see, he doesn't have to blink in and commit his ultimate. Like, earlier in the game, I think he even killed Alina with just, like, blink ulting her solo. I think he did it, like, twice or something. Probably that was more like the 20 minute mark, but now it's 35 minutes, so he doesn't want to just waste that. But you can see what he's doing here. He's not just like only, he doesn't have to just blink ult. Like he has more things that he can do now. So he's able to blink in, try to fissure, fake it out, pump it, uh, pump fake it out, and then jump in with his W. So he has a lot more mobility, a lot more options than just like waiting in the back um, to blink, to blink ult. So that's how you want to be thinking about this hero once you get Ags especially. And you're honestly probably going to get Ags pretty early, and so you're just going to want to farm with that more, and you're also going to want to be able to jump in more sometimes and just initiate, like, straight off the bat without waiting for the perfect opportunity. You can sometimes just jump in because you're not committing a lot to jump in with this because you have so much mobility that if it doesn't work out perfectly, especially that he has BKB, he knows that if it's not perfect, he can get out, and there's a high chance he's going to be able to get out. So, anyway, that is how to play Earthshaker, and honestly... The only other big thing to show you would just be like a huge teamfight ultimate, but that's pretty straightforward. And I don't believe he gets any real good ones in this game. They kind of just like chain feed and then they win. But really, it's just you sit in the back, straightforward. You sit in the back, 
while your, you know, carry goes high ground with Aegis or something. Bunch of enemies jump in, especially if they're melee, that's really good. Bunch of enemies jump in, and then you just blink ult them after their BKBs. Now, the biggest thing is, like I said, after BKBs, you have to kite out the BKBs, and that's why Ags is so good, because you can kind of jump in, do extra damage, do a bunch of stuff without having to blink ult them. Um, and wait out their BKBs and still be effective so you're not just sitting in the back. Now, if you are a support, that's going to be what you're doing more. You're going to be fissuring from long distance. You're going to be waiting for the perfect ultimate after BKBs are out. So that's usually what you're going to be doing um, as a support. You're not going to be as active initiating, jumping in, because you're going to have an offlaner that's probably going to be doing that. Now, if you don't have an offlaner that's like tanky and jumps in, you maybe you're going to have to do it and it's kind of difficult. You might just have to try to get the jump or wait till BKBs are out and then just ult and then potentially die if you don't have enough farm to get ags and stuff like that. That's more how you play as a support. But regardless, that's how you're going to be thinking about Earthshaker um, to have more impact than just the ult. The ult is very, very big if you can get it um, on two or three heroes. So anyway, that's Earthshaker. That's my Earthshaker guide. Hope that helps you guys understand the hero more. As always, like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things. If you like the video, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.